Hey, OKM students, Ben Asman here. Do you like modern conveniences? Do you like insulated containers? Do you like other kind of containers? Do you like your clothes? Well, that's all due to polymerization. That's what we're doing today. Let's get to it. Polymerization is one of the most important fields of study within organic chemistry, especially if you're going into a biological field or into material sciences. Within the biological fields, you have DNA and protein and a variety of other very interesting polymers. Within material science, you have plastics like styrofoam and nylon and a variety of other ones, but those are the ones that we care about today. Our first part today will be the synthesis of polystyrene. This is the type of polymer we often use for our single-use coffee cups, which goes through a radical mechanism. In order to get that radical, however, we need some kind of radical initiator. In this case, benzoyl peroxide. This decomposes under the presence of heat to give you two benzoate radicals, which then further decomposes to give you carbon dioxide and a phenyl radical. This phenyl radical is the actual initiator that we use for our reaction. Now if we take styrene and we add to it our radical initiator, the radical can reach out and attack the further carbon on the double bond. This pushes another radical, alpha, to the phenyl group. This phenyl group actually helps stabilize that radical, so it can go ahead and attack something else, like another styrene, which will then generate another radical. This process could then continue as long as there's still styrene left over. That's one of the reasons why radicals are such a dangerous thing within the human body, because they can just keep propagating from one thing to the other to the other to the other, causing damage the whole way. We abbreviate the final polymer by putting the monomer in parentheses with a subscript of N to indicate a very large number of monomers that repeat it. Now we call this type of polymer a homopolymer, which is to say that it only has one type of monomer in it. And we refer to the mechanism as an addition or chain growth process because it only adds on one piece at a time and only from one side. Part B will be the synthesis of nylon. This is the same kind of nylon we use for stockings and for rope and a variety of other products. For this we have two chemicals we'll be using, sibicoil chloride, which has 10 carbons on it, and these highly electrophilic acyl groups, and 1,6-hexane diamine, which has these highly nucleophilic amine groups. Now on the right hand side you'll see my abbreviations for these two chemicals. I've turned one of them green so you can distinguish the two easily enough. Now when we bring these two chemicals together, the lone pair on the amine will go ahead and attack the carbonyl carbon eventually kicking out the chlorine. This creates a very strong amid bond, the same kind we have in proteins. Now unlike part A, nylon is a copolymer, which is to say it's made up of more than one monomer. Now this can continue polymerizing individual units like this, or it can attach multiple units at a time. This can also happen from both sides of the polymer. We call this type of mechanism condensation or step growth. It is much, much faster than the addition growth polymerization. Once again, we symbolize the final polymer by using parentheses around the two repeating monomer units and the subscript of N. Now for part C, it's not so much of a chemical reaction, so there's no mechanism. It's more of a physical change, as the evaporating solvent expands the bubbles of the polystyrene to give you styrofoam. The first thing you're going to want to do when you come into the lab is put a beaker full of water to boil. Don't forget a boiling chip. Next, you're going to mix the styrene with a white crystalline benzenyl peroxide. Then you're going to add to that the toluene, which is your solvent. Now, the easiest way that this experiment goes wrong is if you forget to add one of these ingredients. So make sure you check it off in your notebook. Vortex blend it capped, and then remove the cap and place it into the boiling water. It has to be at a boil for at least 45 minutes. Otherwise, the reaction won't work. While part A is going, you might as well start part B. Pour your diamine into your 50 ml beaker. Then after you get your sibicoil chloride, tilt your beaker at a 45 degree angle and pour the sibicoil chloride down the side of the beaker so that it forms two layers, nice and slowly. This is just like when you pour a beer so you don't get too much head. It's the same exact technique. Once you have the two layers, grab yourself another test tube and a hook. Drag the bottom of the container and see if you can grab a hold of the nylon. Then loop it around the test tube. Once you have it hooked on, wind the test tube slowly to remove the polymer. The polymer is actually being generated as you are pulling it out, so you can't go too fast. That being said, this does take a while, so here's a sped up version. Once you're done with that, rinse the polymer with a little bit of 50% ethanol. After that, you can play with it as you wish. Now back to part A. The 45 to 60 minutes have passed. Pull the test tube out and let it cool for like 5 minutes. Then you're going to dump this into a large beaker with some ethanol. Now when you combine the two, it should turn an opaque white. If it doesn't, you missed one of the ingredients and you need to start over. 
Stir this for a few minutes by hand, and then hold up the beaker at a tilt. You should have two layers. Remove the top layer, add more methanol, stir again. After a few times, it will look like a squishy putty. Try and break it apart as best you can. Add more methanol and keep stirring. What you're trying to do here is remove the toluene that you used earlier, and get to a final sandy texture. This can easily take five to seven rinses with methanol. Vacuum filter it, rinse whatever's left with a little bit more methanol, vacuum filter that, that's product A. Now moving on to product C. Scrape all of product A into a test tube and cover it with petroleum ether. After this stands for about five minutes, decant out all of the solution. Then scrape out the gummy pellet at the bottom. Attach it to the bottom of some kind of container and press it into a boiling beaker of water. It will expand into styrofoam and that's product C and you're done. <laughs>